I'm going to call this monthly meeting of the Scarborough Sanitary District to order. Before the roll call, I want to call for a moment of silence for Josh Ward, who passed away on April 15th. Thank you. All right. We'll call the roll. Ben. Here. Jason. Here. Joe. Here. Mike. Here. Uh, I'm Chairman Nick Rico. We have Ruth and Tony D'Amelio on excused absences today. Uh, approval of the minutes? Or do you want to go do the audit presentation first? Okay. okay. Approval of the minutes. Motion to approve. Thank you, Jason. Second. Thank you, Ben. Any corrections? As amended. Yeah, I would say the second mention of 634. Let's take that one out. Otherwise, it's pretty good. All in favor of the minutes as amended. None opposed. Thank you. Superintendent's report, you're up, Dave. All right. Um, <clears throat> a copy of the monthly report of operations for the month of March is included in your packet. Our average, average effluent flow was 1.38 million gallons per day. Our effluent quality was well within our permitted limits with 94% BOD removal and 98% TSS removal with concentrations of 10 and 4 milligrams per liter, respectfully. A copy of the pump station flows for the month of March is also included in your packet. The Dunstan Road Pump Station's hydro ranger, which reports the flow data, failed and was replaced by the end of the month. The hydro, hydro ranger only reports flow during, uh, uh, during that time, and the station ran with no other issues. Uh, this district hosted a tour of about 21 students from the Albert McCormick's AP Environmental Science class from the Scarborough High School. It was a great tour, and it was, uh, was an eye-opening experience for them. Uh, they asked some great questions that covered topics ranging from general operations to PFAS, sludge disposal, budget, job opportunities, and the use of solar energy. Our now famous stickers were a hit with them, and uh, we look forward to having them back again next year. Um, Uprise pr uh, Partners, uh, this I meant to edit this. Um, we've been, uh, in, they've been in the process of onboarding our um, uh, our computer system with them. Uh, I have a meeting uh, to update the progress this coming Monday. And as uh, Nick mentioned, on April 15th, Josh Roy tragically passed away due to a heart attack, uh, just 10 days shy of his 40th birthday. The district uh, was well re represented at, at his celebration in life and at his uh, services past Monday. And his uh, family reached out to me on many occasions th thanking me. Uh, he greatly enjoyed his time working for the district. Uh, he was a great employee and uh, who I saw filling my role upon my retirement. Josh will be greatly missed. And that's all I have at this point. Any questions for the superintendent? So today will be Josh's birthday. Mm -hmm. um, correspondence, we have none, no business, old business, new business. 2023 audit. Uh, well, what? And Associates is here to present the 2023 annual audit. I recommend approving. Thank you, Jason. Second. Thank you, Mike. Okay. I think we'll turn the floor over to Christian Smith, our auditor, to uh, present the audit. Mike Doug. 
I'm sorry. That's my order. Yeah. <laughs> oh my word. I, I personally ah, know Christian. You know, I know you yeah. guys <laughs> used to work together. <laughs> oh my <laughs> word. Three sounds a girl. Forgive me. That's I'm fine. sorry, Mike. No, nope, that's dog. fine. Christian Smith does live in, here in Scarborough. And yeah, he, he pays does. a sewer bill. He does. <laughs> Mike does not. That's fine. That's good to know. Live in Scarborough. <laughs> live in Scarborough, pay our sewer bill. <laughs> Well, uh, thanks for having me here. Uh, I don't have a presentation up on the board this this year, but we I've produced some copies, um, the PowerPoint <coughs> as part of the audit. Um, we certainly um, have your financial statements, which are which are bound in front of you. And we also have the board of trustees report, which is a four-page letter. Um, as as usual, the um, the PowerPoint will go over both of those and connect them both so um, you can follow along um, with the letter and the uh, financial statements as we go through the certain slides. Um, so to, just to start with the PowerPoint and go through that. Um, overview of our audit. Um, as an independent audit firm we come in and and review um, the financial statements that the district um, puts together. Uh, and what, what the purpose of that is, is that when we, we review that and, and perform our procedures, that it actually uh, provide, we provide an opinion on those financials, which are pro um, provides some assurance to any readers of those financials. Um, also part of our process, we look at management's internal controls over financial reporting um, and if we have any suggestions to improve those, uh, we certainly communicate those to management and, if, and also the, the trustees. Um, also um, on occasion um, with the financial reporting, there come their new accounting standards may be issued new reporting standards that may need to be adopted by the district in order to report um, their financial statements in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles and government auditing standards. And when those come out, we uh, provide some technical assistance with management to ensure that those, those reporting standards are met and any new accounting standards are adopted. Looking at the um, the trustee letter, um, everybody should have a copy of that. This is a required communication um, as a result of the audit. Um, we're required to communicate certain certain areas of our audits directly to the trustees, and these are outlined and, and bold and underlined in italics and stuff like that all through this letter. Um, and just to kind of, I've, I've summarized them on this PowerPoint. Um, so just to kind of go through these, um, the first, first page, the qualitative aspects of accounting practices, this talks about um, new standards or policies that were adopted during the year. Um, also talks about accounting estimates that may be included in your financials and any significant disclosures. Um, looking at the um, accounting policies, no new standards were adopted this year. Um, as your financials are comparative, that means um, the, the information when you compare it, when you're looking through your financials from year to year, um, are comparative with no significant changes to how the accounting has occurred. Significant estimates is um, we, we consider depreciation as one of your significant estimates. Again, depreciation is when you buy a capital asset in the current year. Um, management estimates the life of this asset and um, expenses that over the life of the asset rather, rather than in the year that it's purchased. Um, a lot of times these methods are, are based on the PUC. Um, outline, although the district isn't required to follow them, um, they use that as a guide to um, put together um, the estimated lives of, of those assets. Um, significant disclosures, uh, the, the disclosures in the financial statement 
have not changed compared to prior years. Um, and we don't feel at this point there's any significant disclosure that's, that's warranted to be um, told to the trustees. Going on page two, uh, we look at these other areas. If we had difficulties um, encountered in, in performing our audit, um, if there were any uncorrected misstatements, disagreements with management during the audit or other type of management representations or co consultations with other independent accountants, um, these would be um, communicated directly to the trustees. As you can see with the PowerPoint, there were none with the exception of the uncorrected misstatements. So the uncorrected misstatements is when we perform our procedures on your financial information, if we have an adjustment to make to compared to what is presented on in your financials, we're going to communicate this to the board, and and they're going to uh, not to the well not just to the trustees but to management and make a decision of whether um, that misstatement needs to be adjusted in the financial statements. Um, in the back of this letter is a listing of those. We had three of them. One of them is, is GASB Statement 87, which deals with leases. <clears throat> the, the district doesn't have any leases per se. It's obligated to. It's the leases for um, the... Um, Cell the cell tower where you're actually receiving revenue from. Um, under GASB 87, there's no um, significant adjustment with those currently. Um, certainly leases could be um, entered into in future years where you may need to adopt that standard. Um, and, and just to give a brief understanding of what that standard is, is when you lease a space to another organization, they're going to have a right of use to that asset, and they can record that as an asset on their financial statements. And now you have an obligation to provide them that asset. So, and in the same, same situation, you have a receivable coming up because they owe you for the right of that asset. So the adjustment you'll see on that back page is, is basically an understatement of if you were to adopt 87, you would show an asset for what you're owed for leasing that out, and you'd have an obligation to provide the right of use. Um, it's not material to the financials, so currently that's, that hasn't been adopted to be adjusted in the financials. <clears throat> the other one is, a, is another post-employment benefit. Um, those are, have to do with the, the trust that you're currently um, purchasing health insurance for. Um, my understanding with that is this, is, this liability is created um, based, which we've, we've discussed in the past, it's based on the ability for um, employees and staff of the district when they retire the ability to purchase insurance on their own. Um, that benefit isn't normally provided to, you know, certain employees with other companies or, or whatever, but where that benefit's provided, they, they actually show a, um, a liability for that benefit to the, to the district. Currently, um, that amount of liability uh, is, is still not material to the financials. However, just to let the trustees know it's getting close. So if this ever climbs over something that's material to the financials, you may have to adopt this. Um, the reason we haven't adopted in the past is because this is not something like main peers with pensions where you're locked into it. This is something that um, management could decide to find health insurance elsewhere. So adopting this and putting this liability on, if that would ever to change, then all of that's going to come off your financials. So currently we're just kind of monitoring that. It is disclosed in your financial, the liability, um, but it's currently not actually recorded on the financials because it's not material. For 
what level would it become material? Um, currently, our materiality um, level, which is calculated based on uh, recommended, based on our standards, um, it's up around 230,000. Um, right now, as you can look at that um, ch chart in the back, um, it's about 168, 170. So it's it's getting. Is that did I say that right? Yeah, 161. So it's getting close. It's been creeping up ever since we've been. I've been presenting that when it came out. Um, it started out very minimal, but now it's um, creeping up there to a point where you either make, need to make a decision whether to adopt it or to um, qualify your opinion on your financials and just say we're not going to adopt it because we don't need to type of thing. And this is a liability that's actuarially determined, um, you know, based on uh, the current staff of the district and their lives and future health insurance costs and those type of things. Um, and again, when when someone retires and has that ability to purchase health insurance, the district doesn't pay for the health insurance. The individual pays for it on their own. So it's it's kind of a, it's kind of what I would call maybe like a paper liability. Um, but when it gets to be um, when the actuaries bring it up to something that's material, then you need to make a decision whether you want to adopt it or not to put that liability on the books. What does adopting it do? To the what adopting does is you'll, you'll end up having some what they call deferred inflows and outflows, which are changes in how you're paying premiums and the premiums um, the trust is holding and they increase and decrease in value. So those numbers change, and that's kind of like a, another way of calling it an asset and a liability. But then you have the actual liability, which is on there, and that increases and decreases as well, depending on who you hire and who leaves and, and the age and, again, those predicted costs um, with that. With adopting that, you're probably going to add about six pages of disclosure to your financial because you have to disclose um, all of those facts and determinations of how they came up with the liability. So and, and again, you know, on a, I guess the, I don't even know if I'd call it a cost beneficial note, but with the ability to just say, no, we're not going to go through them anymore, then you'll be taking all of that out of your financials after we put that all back in so um, but and, and like I said we are disclosing the liability in there you have that disclosure in there it's just not on your financial statements so Dave is this is this the district's portion to participating in main purse is that on so I mean main main health, excuse me, main health trust yes the trust itself is that our participation level on behalf of the district and the employee base on the other side is that what I'm understanding? Is that the liability we're talking about at a certain point we have to claim that? that yeah, it's, it's, again, it's a benefit be, w because you're a member of the trust to be able to provide health insurance for retirees after they retire up until um, when they can, when they can uh, be eligible for Medicaid or something like that. Essentially, it gives them a discounted insurance rate over the market average. It's more of a Cobra. Yeah. 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 So the the district will never pay for the insurance, you know, from when they retire to when they can get on yeah. Medicaid. But it, they are allowed to continue with their current health insurance via Cobra. They can make that decision whether they want to do it or not, um, and you know they could get. In health insurance other places if but this were not the main municipal employee health trust if it were a private insurer would this liability apply no unless they offered the benefit i mean with that benefit it yep. would still apply for retirement if time. like yeah if you were to go through um aetna or something or harvard pilgrim and they offered that benefit and you wanted that plan um it would still apply. Okay, so it doesn't matter who the insurer is. Right. If if you choose to do that, yes. Okay. I, I what I don't understand is the even so it's a benefit that employees have. 
they're paying for it, the district isn't paying for it, but yet it's a liability on our financials? Yeah, it's, it's part of your, that benefit is part of your premium. When, okay. when that okay. trust offers that premium, okay. you have the health benefits, all those you know, benefits with that premium, plus you have a benefit of after you retire, you can still purchase this health plan, COBRA it going forward. We're paying to offer it. We, we had this exact same conversation last audit. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, we should probably just, how do you recommend, what do you recommend we do to rectify it? Well, this, it's, it's completely up to, you know, the, the district and the trustees whether they want to stay with that. But if it becomes material, uh, meaning you, the normal person looking at your financial, if it's not, that liability isn't on there, it's not going to change their opinion of your financial. But when it gets up to 230000 and it should be in there, then you either need to make a decision to adopt adopt that um, standard and record those liabilities and also put the disclosures in your financial or you can say you know we can still change whatever we want we don't think we need to put that in there so we're going to um, qualify our opinion that means we'll have a sentence in our opinion letter that says everything is accurate and um, you know materially correct on the financials except for this GASB, which they have not adopted. So, so what's the drawback of that? There's, to my knowledge, is none. Okay. okay. But th there are some, you know, there's some um, municipalities, there's some districts, and there's some companies that don't like to have qualifications in their opinion letters. Okay. So we wouldn't get a fully clear opinion. It'd be a clean opinion except for, except for okay. that one yeah. item. I mean, I think it's the difference between an A plus and an A minus. I really do. Yeah, that's what I was just saying. It shouldn't affect some bonds and stuff. Yeah. If you're going to be looking to do some bonds, I would just ask the question. Yeah. Dave, I think my recommendation would be that maybe we could set up a workshop with our HR consultant and kind of look at what our options are surround, as we're starting to approach that, that number for whether it's either considered plans or what this actually provides for our employees. I don't take away from a benefit, but if we can improve it or... Yeah, I think it's it. the paper. Um, <laughs> but I can say that and definitely write on. Does it? Yeah. Um, this this that, seem, seems like a pretty straightforward benefit yeah to provide the employees and they're and they're basically covering the cost of it sure i just would like to try to weigh in on it maybe we can just kind of look at it is anyone a taking workshop? advantage of this option right now we don't no. really have any retirees that you know are doing that now because they're all in the medicaid age yeah. a medicare age i mean right. ken is I don't need names. I would just, yeah. he's yeah, not even retired yet, mm -hmm. so. Right. But he's 70. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, oh. but any retirees <laughs> we've had have been at the age, age they of collect they're, they're for collecting. Social Security or Medicare. Yeah. So we've no, we've had just, no early retirements. Right. Because that would be the other option. Either we do a qualified statement when we hit the materiality limit, right. or we modify program right it's definitely outside of the audit conversation but yes. i think we should have a workshop with the hr consultant to see what our options are i would agree i would agree it's a nice idea sorry no, no problem i mean it's I, I i we did have the same conversation last year and i think it's a worthwhile one that we now need to kind of like grab the bull a little bit before we're up back up to the decision yeah for a lot of years that was it was increasing but it was just minor and for some reason now it it's yeah, starting it's to jump up. Yeah. Um, what was the increase? It's up to well, I know it's up to, but what was it? Well, see, and the, it, when you look at that schedule, the one thing you want to look over to the right where under expenses, that's the net increase for the year is, is about $10,000. It's 
that we had about 50, 150 right last year. Yeah. So, so it's it's been climbing like that for the last few years, um, and it's probably just because of you know how the actuaries are doing the the assessment with medical costs and 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 you know the age of the employees and that type of thing. I'll send you an additional note on some of the things maybe we should do for the workshop, but I think we should entertain that. Okay. Cool. And the third one that's on this table is? The third one is, a, is an accounts payable. Um, part of our review is um, there was, I think it was the, oh, I'm trying to remember now. Maybe it was a valve or a? Centrifuge. Centrifuge. So there was a centrifuge ordered in December, um, and then it was recorded as accounts payable. It wasn't received until um, January or February. Uh, so technically, was it an accounts payable at that time in December? Um, kind of our discussion uh, with management is that um, that was ordered to try to keep the budget in line with when that was budgeted to be purchased. Mm -hmm. Just happened to be done at the end of the year. So technically, it's not a payable or uh, an asset. Um, that's on your books right now. It's about fifteen thousand okay. um, dollars, but um, it was recorded and just, it's not definitely not material. So we just passed on me, making an adjustment for that. Okay. Any other questions on that letter? There's no other other findings and. So, other than, hey Mike, other than yeah. that one, uh, the issue we just went over, is, it, is there anything else that's really changed about our audit? No. Okay. No. I mean, we're, 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 we're going through a, a time right now, we've got, we've got a new person helping us over here, I've got a new person helping me, um, we're just trying to, so it was a little delayed this year, but um, you know, I had um, Jill Robinson, was my lead auditor, and she's been doing her audit for 15 years, and she took another job. So, got Parker. Parker's very um, experienced. Um, he worked for an accounting firm for 12 years, doing municipal audits and districts, and then he worked for the um, the city of, of South Portland for his finance director. But it takes takes a while this to kind of gel into how everything works with the accounting so it was a little delayed this year but okay we'll smooth out mm -hmm. sure sounds good thank you Jay. so looking at the financial statements and that's the bound report you can follow along um, i put a slide in here just kind of um, mimicking the table of contents not a lot of changes again it's comparative financials so you're looking at last year compared to this year. It starts out on pages one to three with our opinion letter. Um, second paragraph in that opinion letter um, says that the uh, our opinion, our financial statements referred to above present fairly in all material respects the financial position of this type act activities of Scarborough Sanitary District as of December 31st, 2023, 2022 all the changes in that so clean opinion on the opinion letter um, following that opinion letter starting on pages four five and six well four five six seven all the way through to eleven that is the management discussion and analysis um, this is management's highlights of the changes Probably not going to go through this on unless somebody has some questions on this. Um, it's pretty similar to last year, but it just again, kind of like the superintendent's report, just gives highlights of, as to the what what happened during the district during the year. <coughs> Following management discussion analysis, you have the financial statements, statements of net position. That's the assets, liabilities, and equity in the in the um, district 
statements of revenue expenses and changes those are revenue and expenses for the current years imperative um, statements of cash flows again when you have um, accruals depreciation other items like that uh, this statement uh, takes some of those things out and shows the actual cash flows of operating and investing activities so on page 13 I'm looking at the statements of revenues, expenses, and changes. Does that show that revenue versus expenses we were about 566 under operating revenue? Right, yes. Okay. So on that 2023 compared to 2022, you had an operating loss of 566,000 compared to 268. I would add into that that one of the major components of that is depreciation. So okay. that's a very large expense Thank that's, you. that's throughout uh, those. That was my next question. Yeah. <coughs> so we can look at the, we're gonna look at the cash flows and you can see the, the actual operation of that. Um, just to continue on the table of contents real quick. Um, following the notes, um, you have the schedule of operating expenses, um, the, rev the revenue expense and change in net position that we were just looking at. You can see that your operating expenses are based on cost centers. Um, those are grouped um, based on the natural expenses such as payroll, supplies, utilities. And there's a schedule in the back of the financial that breaks those out into those categories that make up those numbers. And then um, David's superintendent report follows that. So I'm gonna start out on page 12. This is the statement of net position. Assets are at the top, uh, liabilities, and then net position at the bottom. Um, and I have a couple slides um, that you want to follow along with. The first one is your is the gross growth of assets. We've got a five-year trend. Um, pretty strong growth, especially in your investments. You can see, 2019 you were just over four million. Now you're almost up to 10 million. 10 million on those. A lot of those investments are, are basically designated meaning they, they receive um, funding from um, connections, capacity fees, those type of things that, that get put into those investment accounts um, for future growth of the, the district. Um, when that comes up to a point where you may need to um, expand capacity, that's what these are part of your fees and this is where that's going. Looking at your accounts receivable, pretty similar. They seem to be growing slightly, but um, that's the dark brown there. But pretty consistent from year to year. And I wouldn't, you know, where where the um, fees are probably increasing slightly every year. You're not going to see much of a change when you look at that. Um, same with inventory and other assets. Those are very small on this graph. Um, you may see some bumps in your inventory, and that's usually because there's a, a project the next year that you're building up for in, in December. Um, and then your, your cash, your cash is gonna go up and down um, based on both receivables and payables. Um, you can see you had a spike in 2022, a little bit, little spike when you compare it to 2021 and then it dropped. Um, and that was because that large payment went, in, went out for the town. On, on that project that you had that wasn't paid for in 2022. And you're gonna see, you, you can probably see that also in the financial statements on, under, your, under your payables. But assets, uh, 30 million down to $29 million. Um, again, that's, that's primarily you know, from depreciation, a lot of that is, but also um, that change in cash um, for, for paying off the project in 2022. Um, but your growth of your assets look, looks excellent and I don't see anything unusual in any of these changes. 
um, looking at the next page because part of your assets are your capital assets and that number is too big to put on that first graph so I always like to compare it to debt and um, 2023 the district is out of debt so we have no debt in 2023 so you, <laughs> <laughs> so you can see that. <laughs> so um, you know going forward you if, if you're looking at your liabilities which will be on the next page with that um, again you can see the, the spike for that 2022 the amount that was owed with the uh, project with the town but for the most part again everything is fairly consistent um, your payables they dropped right back down into uh, being comparative to the prior years and um, your payroll is pretty consistent with that as well um, right now you're down to for the financial statement your current liabilities or your total liabilities are about three hundred and thirty four thousand so when you look at the next page with your current ratio seeing if your current assets can cover your current liabilities your you went from 3.4 in 2021 and now you're up to 6.3 so you can cover those six times over so very strong financial position there the next page looking at your next net position at the bottom of page 12. oh before you leave yeah. the current ratio is there a benchmark or sort of like uh, an indicator of what a healthy district has for a ratio current ratio well I mean if you have a if you have a bigger ratio it's obviously healthier but um, the only thing I have in comparison to that is if if the um, district was going to uh, borrow um, you know I think a financial institution looks at you know 1.2 1.5 to 1 to make sure you can pay back the loan as a current ratio um, that and that current ratio actually is normally adjusted with by adding back your depreciation and, and, and grossing up what you need to pay in the next year in order to come up with that ratio but 6.3 to 1 is good very good so the net position of your equity again as I as I talked about um, currently the the district has um, almost 29.5 million dollars in equity in the district and you can see based on this graph about 18 million of that is capital assets which means it's unspendable it's either in the ground or in a building or um, being used as equipment uh, so that's that's equity you can't spend you can obviously um, use that to lend on but um, for the most part that's at cost and that's sitting there um, as part of your net position another 10 almost 10.2 million um, that's board, been classified as board designated those are your investments that are in various types of accounts that you've budgeted and been allocating to um, that 10 point million is a little different from the investments sitting on page 12 because there is a portion of those investments that are actually cash sitting in those investment accounts that for the financial statements we have to group up into cash um, rather than in your investment so but for the most part if you look at all of those funds it's about 10.2 million um, at the end of the year that leaves about 1.2 million is unrestricted so that's spendable um, if something comes up uh, emergencies or um, you know budget items that's that's spendable in the next year without without any restrictions so any questions on the net position page 13 revenues expenses and changes in that position I just put this one slide together just to kind of give a five-year trend of how the user fees are going um, you know back in 2019 it was 
right around 3.7 million. Now it's up to 4.5 million over a five year trend. So it's been gradually growing. Obviously when you have new connections, adding people and having more usage, it's gonna, it's gonna grow as well. Um, you can see the rest of the revenues on your financial statement. They don't, they haven't changed significantly. They're pretty much standard. Um, again, the operating expenses, those, those are detailed in the back in your um, operating expense schedule. So you can see the breakdown of that. And, and, and again, the major piece of that is depreciation in there. I think it's, it's like 1.7 million or so. Um, Non-operating revenues, uh, this, this primarily has to do with um, some of your investment activity. Uh, also, if you dispose of uh, any capital assets um, and then um, some miscellaneous non-operating revenues, which would be lease income, that type of thing that's involved there. That totaled about 425000 So your net you change your net position or your net profit loss before your capital contributions was $141,000, down about $800,000 from last year. Capital contributions, the upgrade fees are in there. Um, no developer contributions of systems this year, but um, I think there's one that was scheduled early in 2024, if I remember correctly, that was contributed. So your total change in that position was 944,000 to 776,000 last year. And you're, if you look at the next page on, on page 14, this is the cash flow statement I was talking about, these are, this is actually cash going in and out. So if it's got brackets around it, it's cash going out. Um, if it doesn't have to do with cash, it's usually taken out of this or part of page 15, which is your indirect review of that. This is a direct cash flow. So, you know, cash received from customers, cash paid to vendors, cash paid to employees, um, net cash flows from your operations. 1.1 million. So you had some purchase and sales of investments in the next in your investing activities. Um, also some investment returns. Um, that doesn't really have to do with the cash equivalent at the at the bottom of the page, but those are your investing activities. You had an increase with your capacity upgrade fees and then your miscellaneous non-operating revenue and credits. Financing activities, your purchase of capital assets, uh, 1.5 million during the year. Um, payment of short-term trade accounts, used to finance those. Um, that was a uh, cash outflow. I believe that was the, um, the project for the town. Then you have principal payments on your bond payables and any interest in loans. Those are done as of this year, so you had a cash outflow of about 3.2 million with those items. Uh, so you take the 1.1 million from operations, the 1.2 million from investings, and subtract the 3.2 million of financing activities. That shows you decrease in cash. And again, I think that was all from that one payable with the town. That was it. That had accrued. Page 15, again, just shows how to get from your uh, operating loss um, down to your cash flow of operating activities, which is at the top of the previous page, um, which I think was your question. Uh, and you can see the big, the big one, the big number in there is your depreciation. It's about 1.7. You know, and again, a good, it's, it's good to see that, um, you know, one of the other things we've discussed in the meeting is um, you know, your assets are depreciating 1.7 million a year, so looking to replace those as you go right around that area. It, you know, we've talked about 10-year plans, five-year plans, and replacing things. Um, 
that's how much is coming off the books. So that's that's a thought process of what should be going back into your into your capital assets. And you can see you purchased 1.5, so you're right there um, with that this year. Any questions on the statements? I'm not going to get into too much detail with um, the notes. There aren't a lot of changes here. Um, pages 16, 17, and part of 18 are all your accounting policies. If you had a change in this, then you would have a difference in here. Um, whether you adopt one of those standards or not going in the future, um, that would be in here. It does show your fair value of your investments at the bottom of 18. And when they're set to mature, some of those notes that you have, U.S. Treasury notes. Uh, page 19 are your capital assets. This, this shows, you know, the, those capital assets broke into different categories and then the depreciation being taken on those. Um, you do have a, a construction process, uh, which was an addition this year on that. Um, you have that time to time based on how that flows through at the end of the year. Uh, page 20 are, are your bonds. See that zero at the end of this year. I get another woo-woo. <laughs> Wait, what's the construction pro process? Uh, I believe that was the final payment on the uh, one, one okay. for that Thanks. team. Thanks. Um, Small disclosures, your pension plan that hasn't changed, um, your leases. Um, we do talk about GASB 87 that you haven't um, recorded that or adopted that, and you can see why. It's about $40,000. Um, certainly if these leases have longer terms, more money with the tower. Um, I'm a little confused by the difference between 24 and 25. It's just how the leases end. It's their terms. You have you have you have some terms that are in 24, and, and I think the terms aren't on a calendar year. Okay. They're on a, a different different schedule. Different term okay. year. Yeah. There's a renewal provision mm -hmm. in it. Note eight. That's the post-employment benefits that we just had to talk about. Gasby 75. Um, so. Those are disclosed in there. Um, that's our disclosure because we don't have it actually recorded because it's not material, but we do disclose it to the reader. And then um, commitments in the, in the following year final, uh, follow that. On top of that, we did prepare the um, governmental audit, audit procedure form. This is a procedure form of the state of Maine. It's just a boilerplate checklist that we put on there, and we end up emailing that to the state so we have it on record. Um, again, no findings, no single audits or anything like that, but that page is included for your records. Thank you. Cool. Any questions for Mike? Hmm? Must have been a quick school board meeting. <laughs> um, barring no more questions, comments on the audit, comment. I'll ask for a vote for the motion on the floor to accept the audit as presented. All in favor? None opposed? Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Mike, thanks. I know you talked about, uh, you know, re and taking a little longer than normal, but you know, in some ways, it's refreshing for us as board members because it's very easy to get into the same old, same old. And are we actually getting a good look at things? So, yeah, no, it's it's refreshing to know that it's really being taken seriously over here. And then he looks to copies. I appreciate it. Um, oh, yeah. Can I post extra copies? Yeah. Well, I was going to leave them. Right? I didn't leave them with me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's your present that I've been down every year. <laughs> actually, actually it, was good, it was going to Wendy every year. But. <laughs> <laughs> All right, appreciate everything. Um, 
and uh, we'll see you next year. Excellent. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Welcome Thank to you. stay for the rest of the meeting. I think he's good. <laughs> <laughs>
I will. <laughs> yeah. We were paying for his time. Budget summary. Now, the three month budget summary is included in your packet. I recommend approval. Who's that? Mike or Joe? Yeah. Thank you, Joe. Cool. Any questions on the is it three month budget summary? Yeah, three month budget summary. Barring none, all in favor? We have no members of the public left. Um, trustee comments. Uh, I'll start around the table with Jason. Uh, thanks uh, for Willette and Associates and Wendy, Serena, and the rest of the staff who might have participated in the in the audit, uh, Serena and Wendy do most of the heavy lifting. So Phil was heavily Phil was so heavily involved. Phil, in. Phil was heavily involved. Uh, so thank you all for that. It was a good audit and uh, very interesting to hear every year. Um, it's great to hear that the district is financially stable and moving on in good record. Um, the big elephant in the room, I guess, is uh, the passing of Josh Roy. Um, huge loss to the district, to the community, obviously to his family. Um, Josh was a great guy, uh, somebody who I enjoyed speaking with on a regular business, on a regular basis. Uh, great to speak to you, always helpful, great addition to the district, um, and from what I understand by talking to family, an outstanding son, father, brother, um, all of that. So Josh, you will be greatly missed. And uh, my uh, best wishes to your family and your children. Thank you, Jason. Joe. Uh, so, uh, Serena and Wendy, thank you for your participation with the audit. Um, I actually almost prefer, I think, uh, sitting around the table with Mike because uh, I think I got, get, get, got more out of it this year. And it's always good to see you. I'm glad to hear that the district is in a good finance position, which I did doubt. Um, and I look forward to us improving that. Um, I, every month, I, I thank the staff and the superintendent for uh, um, their good work. And, uh, and I, I don't take that lightly. I do sincerely uh, appreciate that. Um, but uh, as Jason mentioned, you know, uh, um, this month is no different. Uh, with thanking that, but uh, we're at a loss with, uh, with Josh, and if he was here tonight, we wish him a happy birthday, um, which is even more interesting if you look at it that way. Um, so uh, with that, I, I, you know, I, I, my deepest condolences to his family and his friends, and also the family of the district, which he... Uh, he only came to us a short time ago, but he immediately fed in, fit in, and uh, um, in a lot of ways, he was uh, healing uh, some wounds that we had as a district. Um, and unfortunately, with his untimely passing and loss, um, we can't help but recognize that those wounds have gotten ripped back open again. And uh, you know, and Dave mentioned in his superintendent's report that he was really grooming him for his position as retirement. We all felt that and saw that in Josh. So I know that uh, this is affecting our staff deeply. Um, and so I just want to say, and I know I can easily speak for the rest of the trustees, that uh, we are certainly here to support the staff and Dave and whatever they need in this process in, in healing. I mean, losing Glenn a couple years ago was hard enough. And uh, just when uh, Josh seemed to be uh, um, that cure for our, our, our 
our healing, um, we, we lost him. So uh, we, we definitely all feel it. And, uh, and as a trustees board, we'll be here for the staff. However, we need to move on from this one. Thank you. Mike. So, you know, to echo Jason and Joe, um, great job on, on the audit. Uh, condolences to the uh, Roy family and also to the uh, district. I think the one thing that surprised me being at Josh's funeral on Monday were the other people that I knew, um, which just kind of goes to show you, um, you know, Josh's um, what circle of friends you know and and we saw each other and we're like what are you doing here you know i i, I ran it in in the one and he goes oh i was one of josh's best friends uh, up at orno which i had no no idea so you know josh obviously encompassed just just this huge circle of, of, of people and uh some i just never really knew until until the day of his funeral but, um, you know, um, even with, with his passing, uh, I think Joe said it, you know, he does deserve a happy birthday, so happy birthday. Yeah, I, I share uh, the same feelings about Josh Roy as my, as my fellow trustees, and uh, I want to wish his family condolences, and, uh, and also the staff at the Sanitary District and, uh, and let you know, Dave, that, that we're here as trustees to, to provide help through, through this time because it is an extraordinary circumstance and, uh, and, and we're, here, we're here to help and provide support. Thanks. Don't hesitate to reach out. Cool. I will echo all my trustee comments, condolences to Josh's family on this some terribly. With that, I'll entertain the final motion of the evening. Motion to adjourn. Thank you, Jason. Second. Second. Thank you, Joe. All in favor? Thank you. You're done. <laughs>